everyone. This is Reverend Lethel Yembata, Associate Executive Director of American Baptist Women's Ministries, and I'm here with Tara Ade, Director of Prevention and Education for Safe Haven Ministries in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And on September 12th, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are partnering to bring you a domestic violence prevention and education training. I asked Tara to join me in a conversation to talk about the training and to help people understand why this training is so necessary, especially during this time in our world history. So Tara, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have been doing domestic violence work for the last 10 years. Um, and most of my career has actually been at Safe Haven Ministries. And so for those that maybe don't know, Safe Haven Ministries is a domestic violence organization, but what really makes us unique is that we are a faith-based Christian organization, which um, we're actually like one of two in the entire nation. But naturally that just meant that Safe Haven Ministries was often um, supporting and working with churches. Um, and so one of the things that I started seeing really early on in my career is that a lot of um, churches would reach out to Safe Haven when they were in crisis, and a lot of times that looked like somebody that had disclosed to their pastor or their faith leader that they were experiencing domestic violence. And so as a result of that, a lot of times they would then, those pastors would then reach out to Safe Haven and say like, this is my first time navigating these waters and I don't, I don't really know what to do. And it just got me thinking like, anytime that we're in crisis or stressed, it's a really hard time to start learning new skills. And so I started just really thinking like churches are so um, capable and, and really positioned well to support people that are hurting. And so I just really started thinking like, what would it look like to, to talk about these conversations before we ever get to that crisis? And how can we really start to leverage um, our, our, our Christian um, church community to, to be a support system for individuals that are experiencing domestic violence. And so fast forward a number of years and um, yeah, now we're just really working to, to provide that support locally in Michigan, but we've been doing a lot of work, especially on the East Coast, um, really just asking churches like, what do you need to feel more confident supporting somebody that may be experiencing domestic violence? Thank you so much. Tara, it's so important for us to be proactive rather, rather than reactive. And so we're so grateful that you accepted this call to do this work. Um, my next question, Executive Director of the of UN Women, Fumzile Mlabo Unkuka, wrote on April 6th that some 243 million women and girls age 15 through 49 have been subjected to sexual or physical abuse by an intimate partner in the last 12 months. Stress, loss of income, and isolation due to COVID-19 have only exacerbated the risk of violence at home. So as a person working on the front lines, can you tell us what you are seeing and experiencing? And can you reflect on the role of faith communities in supporting those experiencing domestic violence? Yeah, so I think, a number of things that we are seeing and there's still a lot of unknowns but I think one of the things that stood out to me when I read that statistic and kind of read some of the context of that is two things one that number is is just staggering and we know that people that experience domestic violence aren't always reporting the violence either for a whole host of reasons and so I know, and I, I think it's, it's, it's not being too presumptive to, to think that that number is probably even higher. Um, and I think the other thing that stood out to me with that statistic, and I think it does a really good job of drawing attention to the fact that COVID isn't causing people to become abusive, but the situations that COVID has created, um, it really does just create more vulnerabilities and risks um, for people that are experiencing violence to experience even more severe forms of those violence, those forms of violence. And so on the front lines, things that we're hearing is from survivors and victims is they most important, they just feel so isolated. Um, a lot of times they've had to 
live in much closer proximity to their abuser as a result of COVID, either literally sheltering in place with their abuser, or because maybe they pre-COVID were trying to get out of that abusive relationship or trying to um, find just a safer place to live. COVID has kind of really stopped that or made that a lot more hard or complicated. Um, and so it's just, it's been this really hard time because even the way that we provide support has to look a lot different. And I'll use just one kind of simple example. Um, data that we're seeing <clears throat> and that other states have reported is that survivors aren't, victims and survivors aren't meeting with people face to face. Like that's across the board, something that we're seeing. And so even thinking about how often our communities come together on Sunday to worship, um, and that's not looking the same anymore either. And so that idea that somebody could just go to their pastor and say, hey, you know, can I chat with you for a little bit? Here's what I'm going through. Can you help me? Like, that doesn't even look that simple anymore. Um, not that it was ever easy, right? Um, and so I think one of the biggest things that we're asking is, is how do we support our community in ways that maybe we haven't had to in the past, whether that's figuring out how to support people virtually or how do we check in with people to make sure that they're okay? Because at the end of the day, we know that domestic violence is not going away. Um, the situation that our world is in has intensified those situations, sometimes created more danger, more vulnerabilities. Um, and we just, we don't have all the answers yet, but I think we're definitely trying to figure out what do we do? What can we do? And, and that's a learning process that we have to go through together as a community to hopefully create supports that can help people be safe. Thank you, Tara. So can you briefly share what the training will cover and why you think people should attend? Yeah, so I think this is a really good example of how we've had to pivot right um and so i think this training on september 12th we're going to try to do two things we want to make it timely right and so we want to spend some time particularly talking about how is covid impacting victims and survivors of domestic violence and what are some really tangible ways that churches and not just pastors right because that's that this has got to be a collective um effort by all of our community members um, but what are those tangible things that, the, that we can do to support people in the short term and in the long term? And, and really focus that around some of the um, uniqueness that COVID has created, right? Um, and then the other thing we want to do is really just give people an opportunity to learn um, or relearn some of the very basic things like what is domestic violence? What are the behaviors? What are... Um, the characteristics that an abuser might use so that folks that are supporting people can better understand or recognize if somebody is um, demonstrating some of those warning signs of abuse. Um, and again, we're gonna try to make that specific to COVID as well. So abusers behaviors might look a little bit different now too. Um, and so being able to recognize those and know how to respond. Um, yeah, I'm doing that all in about what, two hours. So where we're going to tackle a lot, but I think it's going to be um, hopefully really helpful to those that do participate. Thanks, Sarah. I'm really looking forward to the training and learning more about how I can be an advocate and a support. Any last words of encouragement for our listeners? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I, I think the biggest thing that I want to say, because I hear folks that are coming to my training sometimes say like, I'm so excited, but I feel so overwhelmed. Like I, I don't know everything yet. And that is one, like I, the humility in that is, is really important as well. Um, but I think the biggest thing I tell people is that this topic can seem really overwhelming, but at the end of the day, the single greatest thing that we can offer folks that are hurting is what makes us human. It's using our gifts um, to just listen and support. Um, and yes, understanding domestic violence is gonna make that easier. Um, but I don't want folks to feel overwhelmed by the topic. Um, it is important, it exists in all of our churches, it exists in all of our communities. 
no one's immune from this. Um, but, but I hope that folks come with an open heart and, and can really just start this journey together because it can be really um, rewarding and, 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 and hope, hopeful, right? To know that there is options out there for people that are experiencing this. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tara, for your time. And if you're interested in participating in our domestic violence prevention and education virtual training, please visit abwomensministries.org slash DMV. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much, Tara, again. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Yeah, thank you. I look forward to meeting all of you virtually very soon.